Today on Earth Focus, Dr. Helen Caldicott on Fukushima and the dangers of nuclear power. The Australian physician and author shares her insights with correspondent Miles Benson, coming up on Earth Focus. Dr. Caldicott, Fukushima. Is it possible to forecast the health consequences to the Japanese people and on what scale are they likely to materialize? Well, it's a guess, really, but I have been following it extremely closely every day since the thing started. And I, I must say that two days after it began, I got this horrifying, horrifying vision and feeling that this was like descending into hell and that there's nothing anyone could do about it or will be able to do about it and the results are irreversible. I thought hundreds of thousands would die um, as a result of Fukushima with cancer or leukaemia and but it will also affect future generations down the time scale both from the fact that the food and the ground in large areas of Japan is heavily contaminated with isotopes that last for hundreds of years so they they, they reconcentrate back in the food chain continuously, so you never get rid of the things. The other thing is that once you've got some cesium-137 in your brain or your muscle or your ovary or your testicle or any of the other several hundred elements, they stay in a little place in your body irradiating a few cells with a high dose. So you don't get a low dose. Those cells get a high dose. So from two perspectives, the accident kind of never ends. It doesn't end in your body. Maybe one day you might excrete these elements, but you might not. And that the food chain remains contaminated for hundreds or thousands of years. And we'll start seeing lung cancer and leukemia, I think two to five years from now. And then solid cancers will start appearing um, 15 to 60, 70 years later. So the ace up the sleeve is of the nuclear industry is the incubation time for cancer. It takes a long time for cancers to develop once you have inhaled or been exposed to these radioactive elements. And no cancer identifies its origin. And so there is already a level of cancer in society, but it's going to increase dramatically. What do people need to know about nuclear power in the United States that they are not being told? Everything. It just makes me feel nauseated to think that the industry is spending hundreds of millions of dollars saying that nuclear power is clean, green, sustainable and cheap. And it's, all of those are lies. And I, you know, I get very sick of scientists or people who lie about science. If I lied about medicine, I would be deregistered. I would be damaging my patients. It is totally inappropriate and immoral to lie about science. Nuclear power, A, produces large quantities of global warming gas because it relies on a massive industrial infrastructure of mining, enriching um, two huge coal fire plants to enrich your uranium, building huge reactors, knocking them down in 30, 40 years, storing radioactive wastes for half a million years. I mean, none of that is taken into account. So nuclear power adds substantially to global warming. That's lie number one. Two, it's not cheap because it's all paid for by tax dollars, except when the reactor's built. And even then the utilities don't pay any insurance. If there's an accident, you taxpayers pick it up. The utilities make money by selling electricity. That's all. They don't have to build the reactors. It's all subsidised and paid for. I mean, no other industry has that sort of subsidisation. And do you know why? Because it's the prodigal son of the weapons industry. And when nuclear power was begun by Eisenhower in the 50s, atoms for peace, the weapons industry said we require nuclear power as a sort of Trojan horse, camouflage to hide behind. And then, and then everyone said it was safe. The Japanese didn't want nuclear power after Nagasaki and Hiroshima, but they were talked into it. Uh, so it's a really wicked, wicked industry. And any country that has a reactor, be it Syria, Saudi Arabia, you name it, they have a bomb factory. Because each reactor makes 500 pounds of plutonium a year. Plutonium lasts for half a million years. And all you need is five pounds to make yourself a nuclear weapon. So by selling nuclear power abroad, which America is heavily into, it is causing proliferation of nuclear weapons which it says it's not, but it is. 
and that could trigger a global holocaust between Russia and America, who still target each other with thousands of nuclear weapons. Does the average doctor understand the full risks involved with radiation and nuclear power plants? No, we're not taught about the medical implications of nuclear power in medical schools. We, we did get some curricula going, Physicians for Social Responsibility in the 80s in medical schools, about nuclear war but also nuclear power. It's a very, very interesting subject, but one about which most doctors are fairly ignorant. I would suggest, though, that all doctors obtain a copy from the New York Academy of Sciences uh, on Chernobyl. That was published last year, and, and they, there they translated 5,000 articles from Slavic, from Russian, into English that were published in the Russian medical uh, and, lit and scientific literature. Over a million people now have already died as a result of Chernobyl. It's only, it's only 25 years old. Over a million. And that has been covered up by the blasted UN, by the International Atomic Energy Agency. How dare they? And the World Health Organization. This is the biggest cover-up in the history of medicine. I have never read anything like this in my life. And I've been a doctor since I was 23. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission has asked the National Academy of Sciences to do some research on incidents of cancer in the vicinity of nuclear plants all over the United States. Is that going to be a helpful study, do you think? Yes and no. The National Academy of Sciences has conducted for seven consecutive occasions a thing called the biological effects of ionising radiation and they, they, they put out a report recently, number seven, and it was a good report and it said no radiation is safe, radiation is cumulative and yes, I trust them. There's a huge push by the industry to prevent re really decent research being done but in a way it's unnecessary. Because the German government, and the Germans are very precise with their data, examined, I think, 16 old reactors and looked at children under the age of five who lived within 5K of the reactors. And they had more than double the incidence of leukaemia. Children are 10 to 20 times more radiosensitive than adults. More than double the incidence of leukaemia and a high incidence of solid cancers. And the closer they lived to the reactor, the higher the incidence of malignancy. Now that study is absolutely classical. You can't find any holes in it at all. And in a way, it doesn't need to be repeated. The data's there. It's not just cancer, it's deformed children as well, isn't it? If, if, a, if a fetus, a normal, genetically chromosomally normal fetus, um, is exposed to a tiny bit of plutonium that lodges in its brain, developing brain. It can kill the cell that's going to form the right half of the brain or the left arm. That's called teratogenesis, damage of a normal fetus. It also, plutonium in particular, which is highly mutagenic, lodges in the testicles. It has a predilection for testicles and it lodges next to the spermatogonia, the cells that form the sperm, the precursors. And it's an alpha emitter highly mutagenic, so it can mutate genes in the sperm to induce genetic mutations and genetic disease down the generations. And it takes up to 20 generations for recessive mutations to express themselves. So we're talking about eons of time for expression of genetic disease. That's the second thing. The third thing is if the man's got plutonium in his testicles and every male in the Northern Hemisphere has a tiny load in his gonads from weapons testing days and plutonium is still falling out. And the man's cremated. The smoke goes out the chimney with the plutonium so you can breathe it in, another man can. And it's ad infinitum because plutonium has a half-life of 24,400 years and lasts for a long time. But the other thing is that the body thinks plutonium is iron. It's an iron analogue. So it's stored in the liver where it causes liver cancer. It's stored in the bone marrow to pour, cause um, to produce haemoglobin in the red blood cells, but it causes leukemia or, or bone cancer. It uh, crosses the placenta into the developing embryo, which lets nothing through it, incidentally, except plutonium and a few other nasties. It, it got, it's stored in the uh, testicle too. So. It's a ubiquitous, really dangerous isotope. And from the time they discovered it in the Manhattan Project, they knew its dangers. 
Does plutonium come only from nuclear weapons testing, or is there a risk of it escaping from nuclear power plants as well? Routinely, power plants emit radioactive ele elements all the time. Tritium, they cannot prevent tritium escaping, highly carcinogenic. It's um, hydrogen, radioactive hydrogen, H3, highly carcinogenic. That's probably what's causing the cancer in the kids living around the reactors in Germany. Carbon-14, highly carcinogenic. Xenon, krypton, argon are all emitted. And they say, oh, it's just routine. Like I could say, oh, you've just got a routine cancer. Don't worry about it, that sort of thing. Plutonium doesn't escape until there is an accident, like a meltdown or an explosion, like Fukushima or Chernobyl. Three Mile Island had a meltdown. So going forward, Dr. Caldercott, what would you like to see done? I want an informed democracy. That's what Jefferson said. An informed democracy will behave in a responsible fashion. And it's like I have to inform a patient. Say you, I have to tell you you've got pancreatic cancer. I have to tell you what it means, where your pancreas is, how it operates, where the cancer could metastasize, what sort of treatment you might need, the side effects of that, what your prognosis is. You must be educated. That's the practice of medicine. Now the earth is in an intensive care unit, acutely clinically ill. And we all must understand what is happening, what the pathology is, the pathogenesis, because we all are in fact physicians to a dying planet. Therefore we must be educated. The only way to educate Americans is through the media. The only way to do that is to get hire a really, really best PR firm in America and put people who are educated, like me and others, who can explain to Mr. and Mrs. Joe Sixpack or Mr. and Mrs. Brown exactly what I to I've told you today in terminology that they will understand. And I know I did it in the 80s. And I'd think Mrs. Brown, who's loading crates of coke into her, her trolley in the supermarket and she's got six kids following her. If she doesn't understand that tonight there could be a nuclear war and that she and her children could be vaporised and turned into gas, we're not going to be influential. Dr. Caldicott, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Now on U.S. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.